Please join me in welcoming Senior Vice President of Global Brand Development, PepsiCo, Kristen Patrick. Last day of Shop Talk, huh? How's it been going? Good. So usually when I'm asked to, to get up and speak at um, conventions, I have to turn down um, the offer because um, I have a daughter. And I live in Los Angeles, and basically every week I'm commuting somewhere in the world. But I felt that it was so important to be here at this convention because of the conversations that are happening. To me and uh, PepsiCo, they're actually some of the most prolific in the world. And so I really wanted to make time to be here. This presentation that I'm going to show you should be fun. So um, there's lots of videos, which is good. So I, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, the other thing that happens when I speak at these things is I'm usually by myself somewhere in Europe or the Middle East. And uh, today my sister's here, so I'm really excited for that. <laughs> All right. So, we live in a crazy complex world. We're all feeling it. Um, and I think that we're all trying to get our hands around how to make things um, easier and better for our business. I know we're feeling that at PepsiCo. And so um, today I'm going to share what we're doing, how we are getting through these crazy, crazy times. For those of you who don't know, um, whenever people think of PepsiCo, they think of brand Pepsi. But we actually have a very full portfolio of products that range from Frito-Lay snacks to nutrition products under the Quaker and Tropicana brands, and we'll be expanding that area as well. And then, of course, our beloved beverages. So I'm going to go ahead and just play a video that shows you about the crazy world we're living in. So there are consequences for us in business with this consumer-led, digital-centric world. And consumers are continuing to take control more and more than they ever have. You know, in the past, we could push out a 30-second television spot and watch our product sales spike. But really what's happening is um, consumers are harder to connect with and even harder to drive people to where you want them to go because they're off doing their own thing. The other thing that's happened for us is we were heavily dependent on 30-second television spots. And, you know, advertising in 30-second spots will always be important to us and many CPG companies. But really now the message needs to stretch across multiple touch points. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And the messaging can't be fragmented because what the consumer sees on television, online, in your, in your retail stores, digitally, all needs to be connected and fluid. And as you saw in the video, there is a massive paradigm shift in how many companies are doing business. And it's really changing the way that all brands have to act and think. 
We need to start telling stories and connect seamlessly across all the, the consumer touch points. And really what we're talking to the consumers about, it needs to be relevant in their world and how they consume content and information. We used to live in a push communication model and just shoving information down consumers' throats via television and some of the other communication touch points we have. But we, we and all brands are learning that the communication now needs to be entertaining and really, really compelling. So in today's world, I love this quote. It's, uh, you've got three seconds or I'm moving on. Literally, we don't have 30 seconds anymore to capture someone's imagination. We have three seconds. If you think about the way that you look through your social media feeds, it's a thumb scroll. So we've got three seconds now to decide if consumers are going to click in to watch your content. And that really has put brands in a position where they have to be telling compelling stories. And in fact, we consider ourselves brand storytellers now. This idea of publish or perish. So back in the day, you know, we used to create maybe two massive television campaigns a year. Back in the day, Cindy Crawford, Michael Jackson, Britney Spears. Now we have to create about 400 pieces of content a week on one brand. So we've really had to rethink how we get those stories out. Brands really need to be publishers and they need to be on 24 seven. We talk a lot at PepsiCo about always on brands and that's exactly what that means. Or brands will lose the relevancy. The other thing that's happening is that In today's world, we really have to listen to our consumer. There we go. Okay, in today's world, um, we really have to listen to our consumer and you've got to know your audience intimately. And so that has put a whole new challenge on the way that we market. So you've got to own your consumer. You really have to put things out in the world that people want to be part of, experiences that they can't get anywhere else. You also have to understand the consumer's passions. You have to understand them in their daily activities. You got to know where they, where they are and then where they're going. You also need to create a dialogue with them. You have to be relevant in their world and where they live and where they're playing. And you can't just talk at them, as I mentioned before. You really need to listen to them, create a dialogue with them, and you have to be part of their conversation or you become irrelevant. Another key thing that brands need to do today is define culture. Successful brands don't follow culture. They're the ones defining it and inventing it. One of the things that we try to do at PepsiCo is get out just ahead of the trends. It's incredibly important to tap into a human truth when you're creating content and really look at the consumer and find the insights. One of the things that we have been thinking a lot about, particularly on brand Pepsi, is it can't all be games and fun all the time. How do you really tap into the human spirit and the human emotion? And also, um, because a brand lives across five screens now, you have to be more than one way in your communication. We might act one way at the Super Bowl, but it's okay to be a little emotional in, in long form content digitally. So really stretching emotional territories to not just talk to your consumer, but really understand them and touch them. The other thing that's incredibly important is that we're infusing societal purpose into the core foundation of how our brands culturally think and act. No longer is it just a second thought or an afterthought or just a fun thing to do to donate money or to stand up for a cause. It's really baked into how our brands act. And the other thing that's really interesting that's happening is it doesn't have to just come from the corporate level down. It doesn't have to start with the foundation. It really is starting and sprouting from the brand upwards. And by that I mean Brands can have their own purpose and then the corporate foundation can be focusing on something else and that's something very important. All of this is really critical, especially to an emerging generation. So let's take a listen to what this new generation has been telling us. 
I'm definitely in control of my future. I think our generation is totally in control. I think that we're more interested and more empowered than we ever have been. Our generation is pretty special because we have the ability to be more than one thing at once. For example, right now, I'm an artist. I'm a fashion director. I'm an actress. I'm a singer. I like to make my own furniture. Just because we're one thing doesn't mean that we aren't many things. If you want to go for it, you just go do it. And you don't let anything hold you back. Whatever it is that you do, it's all about how you put yourself out there. I mean, we have the platform to showcase ourselves in any way. Promote change and individuality and just come together more as a whole. We're changing the world by being us. I just want to be active in as many ways that I can so that I can help discover myself. I mean, they're empowered. <laughs> they're empowered. Um, the other thing that we've been hearing a lot of is about gender fluidity from this next generation of consumers. You know, you have to remember that we talk a lot about millennials, but millennials are getting married. They're, they're getting older. So who is that next generation? And it's going to be even more challenging. So look, we um, are working harder and harder to turn our approach upside down at PepsiCo. We actually have a portfolio of challenger brands. You know, Pepsi um, has always been a challenger. And so we're trying to challenge brand marketing convention by taking co like full control of our brand communication. So let me show you the shift that we're making. We're really starting to cre create equity beyond the bag and bottle. So here's what's interesting. The company has done such a good job over the years of building brands that there's almost more equity in the brand itself at points than the actual product linkage. So we're starting to lifestyle, uh, to, to follow this lifestyle ecosystem. And no longer do we just do 30 second spots. We're marketing across content. We're doing partnerships in a bigger way than ever before. We're creating experiences, which I'll talk to you about. And then we realized that we have so much equity in our brands that we're actually extending relationships into brands outside of just cola and snacks. And again, you just want to surround the consumer with as many touch points as possible. Oh, and you need to do it seamlessly. The other key focus for us at the company has been we've really revolutionized design, and that's very important. We hired our first chief design officer. So the stuff that you see from our company is of the utmost um, and highest standard in design. The other thing that we're doing, and this is, um, I think, one of the biggest things that we're doing as a company, we have had to create content that disrupts, that engages, that entertains, and lives seamlessly across five screens. So we had to build our own content studio. We had to build a content studio to tell stories differently. We needed to build expertise in the company to develop and invest in content, to touch those human emotions and insights. Um, we actually created a physical studio space in Soho where we create for our brands around our consumers. We put a base of people in Los Angeles to connect with the entertainment industry. We have people sitting in Bollywood now, and we need to become storytellers. The name of our studio is the Creators League Studio, and we call it PepsiCo's Next Gen Content Studio. This is a video about what we're doing. We're doing two things. One is we're doing branded content, and then we're investing in intellectual property. But take a look.
So it's no longer just about the 30-second television spot. And in fact, we actually are creating feature-length films. Um, we developed a character uh, with Kyrie Irving for our Pepsi Black product. And uh, he dresses up as an old man who literally like rocks the basketball court. And we're turning it into a feature-length film. Uh, we, we made that announcement. We're also doing a, a film about music because Pepsi has been so prolific in the music industry for so many years. We're doing a... Um, kind of like an urban pitch perfect with the rapper T.I., so that's in development right now. So we're doing all of this with some of the best storytellers in the world. Um, I'm going to show you some other examples of what we're doing. So as you know, we own the um, Pepsi halftime show for the Super Bowl. We sponsor the UEFA um, competition, and they came to us and said, hey, you guys are really great at doing halftime shows. We don't have anything like that. Can you help us develop a pregame show? So we worked to get them Alicia Keys to do a pregame a pre show and a celebration. And then we wanted to do content to drive people to watch the viewage. So we got Alicia Keys um, to help us construct three different short branded content films. Um, one was Peace, one was Love, one was entitled Warrior. And then we distributed it digitally and it drove viewership to the actual pregame. So this is one of the pieces. Do you want to be great or do you want to be good? I ask myself that all the time. To me, passion is love plus desire. We have to be making something. We have to be working towards something. We have to be dreaming about something. We have to be believing in something, no matter who we are. What really drives my devotion to music is like the uncovering of myself. In order to be great, you have to be brave enough to like be so vulnerable, be so honest and so truthful that you're just like, here's everything I am, everything, I'm not leaving anything inside. We got way too much That's what we say, you leave it all on the stage, you leave it all on the field. You're either gonna put it there or you're not gonna be great. And that is something that even I am still learning. So that just shows you like the production value and what we're doing. Like this is coming from a brand, guys. This isn't, you know, coming from Hollywood. This is this is the standard of excellence that we had to live up to immediately. And PepsiCo as a company, I think, had a huge standard of excellence um, in getting into this area because we for so many years have been intricately entwined with the music and entertainment industries. One of our other brands is Gatorade. And the brand stands for this idea of like winning from within. And they wanted to do branded shorts that they were going to launch digitally. And so we set out with some of the best um, producers and directors in the world to create three stories. The Rugby Boys of Memphis was a story about a, a destitute so uh, rugby team in Memphis, Tennessee. The school wanted to bring a sport um, to the town and they couldn't bring anything that needed equipment because they didn't have enough money, so they chose rugby. And so this is the story of the Memphis rugby team.
so you can see now how the brand can like really start to tell these stories about what it is. The product integration is only done in a really tasteful way. Like that scene where they dump the Gatorade on top of the coach's head, that would absolutely happen in real life. You know, we're not stopping the footage and having somebody drink the beverage. It's, very, it's a very natural integration. So we did those films and we didn't really realize what we had on our hands, but ESPN called us and asked us if we, they could actually air the film. So they aired over the holidays. Um, we've gotten into the Tribeca Film Festival, the Washington West Film Festival, and then the Inside Memphis Film Festival. So we're really excited about that. The other thing that we're doing is we are turning our brands into experiential destinations. So we just opened um, a cola house in New York City where you can go to get drinks infused with the cola nut. And if you have the chance, please go and check it out. Um, it was listed as like one of the hot places to visit during New York Fashion Week. But what we're doing is we're really touching consumers on a multi-sensory experience level and giving uh, them a deeper understanding of our origins and really creating a stage for news and entertainment. And we're looking at this for every brand across our portfolio. So we're looking, you know, maybe a, a Quaker odory. The other interesting thing that happened is we're really um, starting to look at other products. So when we went around the world to talk to consumers about what they wanted next from brand Pepsi, as an example, they said, you know what, you guys have a right to tell us about music and create content for us. We'd wear apparel from you. So we are, we are going there, and we're working with some of the top designers and distributors in the world to make it real and relevant. This is a collection that we sold at Bloomingdale's. We also had it in Liberty of London and Colette in Paris. So what does this mean for you and for us, whether you're a brand, a consumer, or a retailer? Look, we're both challenged with competitive headwinds. Um, brand equity is really what's going to drive retail traffic. We have to do a good job in creating that consumer love. We also both need more meaningful connections with our consumers, and we have to create assets that can, that can benefit both of us. So how do you take some of this content and use it on your e-commerce platforms to drive traffic and viewership and just create that brand love? Or how do you take you know, a, a small version of the cola house and put it into your retail stores? I think that it's the conversation between the brands and the retailers and the e-tailers. Together we can achieve more. And we have a desire to share and collaborate more with you guys to create more ownable equity. So in today's modern marketplace, really you have to listen you have to learn, you have to create together with both consumers and your retailers, and you've got to just be out there 24-7, always on, communicating regularly with the people who are going to help you realize your future and our future. Thank you.